Give us any chance, we'll take it. Read us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Welcome to the After Night, a podcast about eight seasons in a row. I'm Mr. Fernandes, and... I'm Chris Jawana. Hello, Teenage Lust. Teenage Lust means nine minutes of trouble. <laughs> this is Teenage Lust, otherwise known as Young at Heart, depending on which region you're in, which episode, which version of the episode you are watching. Uh, it was directed by Tom Trovich and written by Dana Olson. This is an episode from season seven of Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. Chris has some facts about these people coming up eventually. Indeed, indeed. Uh, especially about movies they worked on, because oh. holy cow. Well, that's cool. This is what the episode's all about. Shirley's romance with college student Mike Smith is going swimmingly until Frank cards him at Cowboy Bills and she learns he's not legally old enough to drink. But Shirley's charmed into taking Mike out on a date and puts the run up with his friend, the Stallion, who turns out to be his nerdy, awkward friend, Lyle. At the frat party, the girls feel awkward, old, and out of place. That is, until they learn Mike and Lyle are pledges and that they must dance with all 30 members of the frat to guarantee the boys' initiation. Can the girls step up to the plate and guarantee Lyle and Mike's initiation? What do you think about this one? They shoot pledges, don't they? <laughs> that joke's still not going to get old to me. Um, I think the the way this episode can be summed up from my experience is, oh my god, two and a half hours last night on this on this batch of episodes an hour plus of which was tracking down information on the cast members of this freaking episode. There are so many guests. Please, Laverne and Shirley, stop doing, for the love of God, stop doing party scenes. Stop torturing me like this. Stop get, Why do you hate me? Too many uh, party okay. scenes. Too many college-age kids. So many <laughs> kids. Anyway. Uh, All of the marshals. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of Marshalls, a lot of Hallands. Yep. And uh and three actors that went on to do other stuff, including cool. one who was uh was actually on duet. Oh. Yeah. We'll yeah. we'll get to that. Um but okay. I know that initially when we watched this, I had a lot of trouble with this episode. I yeah. I was calling this Date with a Racerhead Part Two. Yeah. Yeah, you were. And I I've warmed up to it a bit since then, but it's definitely one that I Fat shaming's wrong. Yeah. Fat shaming is wrong, and the fact that this show had been doing so well without doing any of it for a while yeah. is really sad. So this is, interestingly, as I mentioned to you, this is where Rhonda redeems herself, because yeah. as much as I hate what Lyle, that Lyle is essentially assaulting her, yeah. she realizes it's just a he's just a poor little boy that needs a cuddle. He just, he's, he's, yeah. he's desperate for affection. Like, he probably wasn't held enough as, and and she even says he's very cuddly you know it's like and yes us fat guys are nice and squishy and soft that is that is one of the reasons why being a, a chubber uh, you know excuse me being a overweight person has a perk is that you're soft and squishy like a teddy bear and it's wonderful and it's a good thing and you should be healthy as you can regardless of whatever that weight means yes just be healthy as yes. long as you're healthy I mean, I'm a heavy dude. It's, yeah. it's, it's actually down to my bones. It's actually keeping from breaking my leg twice, to be there honest. Anyway, so all of that aside, like, do I like the episode? It's good. Uh, I like a lot about it. I actually think as a piece of development about Shirley is interesting. This is now the yeah. second time she has tr been very interested and attracted to somebody who is practically underage. Yeah. It's, it's a... It's a dark twist. Yeah. But there's an... Uh, Shirley is always trying to reach perfection, and it's almost like she never had that perfect boyfriend when she was young. Yeah. Because let's be real, Carmine wasn't yeah. great. Yeah. She idealized that relationship, but uh, there's no way he was uh, staying on the straight and narrow and being true to her even in high school. Oh, totally. And not to yeah. mention, he was a freaking bully. They, again, yeah. to bring up Day with a razor head. It pretty much makes it clear. Yeah. He yeah. was a guy, he was the jock throwing nerds into lockers and yeah. laughing and thinking that yeah. was okay. Threw Lenny and Squiggy in the lockers. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So as, if, as if they weren't being just, you know, demolished, you know, at home. You know, yeah. they didn't, we're, we're getting, you know, henpecked to death by, you know, Squiggy's mom or having the the trauma and beating, you know, the early childhood beatings on Lenny. So, yeah. anyway. So, surely having that is is an interesting sort of angle for that character. And I, I, I kind of... 
I kind of like it in a way. Yeah. I just a little like, eh, because I also wanted yeah. to overcome those types of issues and also just go off and be a doctor and succeed and be this fantastic, wonderful person for herself and get uh, work out her issues with Carmine and yeah. get married and have three kids yeah. and a dog yeah. named, named David. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting quirk in that, you know, I think she's just attracted to people who are very um, joie de vivre that have the like and love like animals. If you're a guy that you're, that's somewhat attractive and is sensitive to animals, she will be all over you. That's what happened with Monroe, and this happens here. Good point. Uh, the age almost doesn't matter, but she just made the presumption this guy was of age, and she was wrong. Oops. Yeah, and <laughs> she was of age. He's of age for her yeah, to yeah, have a exactly, relationship yeah. with, but oh, yeah. he's still yeah. too young for her by her definition. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and too young to drink. Too young to drink is kind of like yeah. That's yeah, a line. exactly. When you're 27, too young to drink is like whoa, get yeah. back up, yeah. back yeah. up, yo. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like, do you really want to date someone who is seven years younger than you when you are 27? It's kind of, mm -hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. In in um, I. That's second. right. Yeah. Okay. We were we were just past that point. Uh, yeah. About ten ten years ago, you and I. Yeah, yeah, but things change because now you are old. Anyway, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know you're kidding. I'm <laughs> finding it funny. We're we're having to. Good. This would be the good. good, good. Listen, this is the this is the point. If we were recording this in the same room, I would be walking, moving over, and giving you you know squishy, yeah. tickly hugs at this point yeah. because that's <laughs> that's the point. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing yes, you, my love. Yes. Anyway. Good. 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 You've heard it. You understood me. Good. All I right. totally understood it. Good. Yeah. 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 Good. Um. But uh. But anyway. So the the whole um. The whole hook of yeah. this episode, though, is the idea of are they too old to still party and are they still, you know, and, and there's a there's a delight in watching them pretend to be young again, you know, with pigtails and like and, you know, giving themselves yeah. the pep talk yeah. about like, are yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. oh, you know, if you do that, when you do it like this, then you're easily 25. When you do this, yeah. oh, you're 19 at, yeah. you know, at, you know, yeah. at most. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're having fun with it. That's really fun. They're just like, making fun of the concept. The whole idea of this teasing each other is really great. Yeah, it's like, let's all go yeah. down to the mall shop. All the yeah. boys are going to be there. Oh, the boys it's like, oh, no, I, I want to stay home and watch American Bandstand to see if Justine wins the contest. <laughs> that was great. I love that. I love that bit. I love everything about that. But then she you know, decides to go out with this guy anyway. Well, it, uh, part of it is I think she was also too into character. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. And then they end up on their double dates, and you know, and then a wild dance marathon ensues. As we know, Penny could dance up a storm. Mm -hmm. Cindy was willing to learn and follow, and thus, we get our big old marathon at the end of the episode. Yeah, it's I, I'm, sadly there's not much I can really say to that uh, the dance portion. It is very well executed. There's some very yeah. good dance partners that they have, and it's uh, it's well yeah. choreographed. Oh yeah. You can tell they threw in some professional dancers. I think some of these people ended up on Solid Gold or American Bandstand or, or, or Soul Train. Somewhere along the line. That would not surprise me. I don't have factoids think... about them because there were too many actors. <laughs> so many actors. So many yeah. actors torturing Chris's mind. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the most I've ever had to go look up factoids about on uh, a lot on an folks. episode of the show. And all most of them are marshals and hounds, just pushing that nepotism button. But yeah, okay. Um, do you want to go through this sequentially, or do you want to do this at a different time? Do you want to talk about the episode more? What do you, What do you think? Um, I think we should go. Do you want to go? Do you want to go as these people appear in the episode? Does that work? Yeah, sure. Because then we can sure. like. Talk yeah. about them and then move on to the, you know, talk yeah. about the episode and yeah. then move on to the... Yeah. Okay, cool. So, like, for instance, our, we begin with Thomas Bird as Mike. He shows up right in the beginning of the opening scene, right as we come into Cowboy Bills. He's roller skating with Shirley. It's very cute. Handsome guy. Sh looks shockingly like the lead actor in my first feature film, actually, uh, which is kind of weird. Now... He was new to the game, Tom Bird. Uh, he does continue out of the projects. He's in Young Doctors in Love as one of the new interns, of course. He popped up on Fantasy Island, Twilight Zone, the movie. Unfortunately, he's in that segment. Uh, he also was on St. Elsewhere. He was the lead in one season, Wonder Boon, uh, an episode of Murder, She Wrote. He was in Young Guns 2 and even a two-parter, a Frasier, in the year 2000. 
Now, uh, he moved into stunts in the mid to late 80s, but worked on Young Guns, which that's going to get referenced a bit. Uh, Brotherhood oh. of the Gun and uh, The Last Outlaw, which is, I think, The Last Outlaw is that HBO Western by Eric Red, isn't it? The one with Mickey yes. Rourke? Yes, 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 it is. Yeah, I've never seen that. Um, oh. But yeah, so he, this dude was charismatic. I really yeah. liked him and I liked his, and I actually kind of liked this character. I would have loved to have seen him pop back up again. I'm yeah. kind of bummed that him and Lyle... Well, actually, okay, I take that back. I know Lyle's coming back, because I had to look up factoids about him. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah. what was your take on Thomas Bird as Mike? He was really uh, nice, enthusiastic. He managed to completely make you sympathize with Mike. I mean, he was um, a nice-looking guy and a nice-looking kid who still looked like a kid, but also made you, you know, feel for Mike, who's this, this guy who's attracted to this older woman, and they're both adults, technically. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it, and I'm going to try to get through this, and I'm going to get what I would like to get, so to speak. And I also like that it's n- not him, but Lyle, that has one of the girls at the frat party that actually is interested in him. Yeah, 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 yeah that's sweet! Played by the lovely Tracy Reiner, yes. Penny's daughter. Yep. Yep, we'll 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 get to we'll get to that in a in a bit. I didn't yeah. want to jump yes, ahead. Yes, I was just pointing yes, out yes. though that yes. even though it's kind of played off as a joke, it's like eh, yeah. she, you know, she's very. And the main yeah. thing is, she gets goosebumps from him. That's yeah. nice. Mike doesn't seem yeah. to inspire goosebumps. He does, however, yeah. seem to get uh, surely a little put off when he talks about giving her the tour of the rooms, including the uh, quote unquote bedrooms. Which uh, my note there is, uh, whoa, hey boy, you're still pledge. You gotta. You gotta wait wait until you're a full frat boy before you get all uh pushy like that. That's that's a joke about frat boys. I'm not saying that's actually perfect. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here nodding, going, Yeah, it makes sense. It kinda makes sense. <laughs> like it's pretty clear that uh that that Lyle here is supposed to be uh the uh, kind of like a flounder figure, kind of from Animal House. Right. But it's clear what they're trying to play with, they're trying to play with Animal House tropes. Only gentler. And because uh, you don't see anybody visibly drunk except for that, those two girls who are clearly high on acid. Oh yeah. Show up to the party high on acid. Why? So there's another. There's another drug joke in Laverne Shirley that managed to get by the censors and is so completely subtle that unless you are a grown up, you are not going to get it at all. Yeah. Because I, when I was a kid, I didn't. Under, I did not get that joke at all. But now I do. <laughs> oh yeah, no. As as an adult watching this for the first time, it was like, oh, they're wasted. I mean, yeah. it reminded me of the two the two flower girls from um, uh, More Than Friends, the ones that are uh, Michael McKean's uh, the Michael yeah. McKean characters groupies. Yes, 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 yes. I'm Sky. I'm Wind. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, hey, you got a, mi- a Miss Sky and a Miss Wind here. <laughs> Maddie, this is my old lady. <laughs> But uh, anyway, though, yeah, uh, the Lyle, though, yeah, he's and that actually was uh, Jim Green. Uh, Jim Greenleaf plays as Lyle No Wiki. He'll pop up again later in the season as well. But he, uh, as you were saying, the, the sort of the character, that archetype from Animal House, he pretty much was getting cast as the fat guy in a lot of projects. Yeah. Like even in Gorp, he's cast that way. But he also did get to be the voice of the weatherman and in Hero High. He was a regular on James at 16 and the Fitzpatrick's. The Fitzpatrick's of which uh, was actually killed by CBS, putting it up against Laverne and Shirley in Happy Days during the 77, 78 season. So that's an interesting connection. You know, he his career, you know, basically kind of stayed as being that guy. Like, see, he's even in uh, the great on Clark's exploitation meets arcade exploitation film Joysticks. Ah, Joysticks. And he's also a frat boy in Night Shift. By the way, that is not the only great on Clark reference we're going to make this episode. Oh, wait. That's great. But Greenleaf's last uh, on-screen performance was in uh, 86, in an episode of The Fall Guy. So I have a feeling it may have gone to a point, you know, the money wasn't as good, and it may have just been, it's like, I'm just being the fat guy for these people. Cause, but that's So that's the thing, is, you know, when people project that onto you, yeah, that becomes all that they know you for. And it's, incre- it, like, that's the thing about the fat shaming thing, why we, you know, why I get on the case of it, and I, I know you've gotten on the case of it for this, too, yeah. is that it is dehumanizing. Yeah, it's um, it's it's very much it's the type of ableism that is very similar to racism and sexism. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gross. It's pretty gross. Like this isn't as bad as it is in a racer head because Lyle's given uh, is made to be like shown to be likable mm-hmm. and shown to be desirable. Yeah. Oh, totally. And incredibly yeah. well-meaning. He means yeah. well. And even though I don't like that, he manipulates Laverne into the pity date, which. Yeah. 
Because I will say this for Mike. Mike is not being the good wingman that he's not setting Lyle up properly. Like yeah. if if he was doing his job right, he would have been pulling Lyle off of uh, off Rhonda. He would yeah. have been, you know, been the one that immediately jumps up. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Remember what we talked about, bro? Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's what yeah. Mike should be doing. Yeah. Instead, he's just like, oh, oh that's Lyle. Everybody knows Lyle. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's a little, he's, he's, he means well, but he gets a little excited sometimes, you know. Oh, uh, jeez. At the end of the day, they're not two bad boys, but obviously they're not going to end up uh, with the girls in the end. But it's a nice little moment of camaraderie that kind of reminds me on some level of um, the girls uh, dating the um, men of smaller stature and take you to the small. And that they have these, this wonderful moment of camaraderie. And in this case, you don't want the relationship to last. In uh, take you to the small, you want you do want it to last. You do want them. Yeah, you want them to just like at least just hang out, just have a yeah. good time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see them being friends after this. Totally. Yeah. The one we can definitely see them not being friends with, though, is Goodrich, the uh, the frat guy um, who uh, is, you know, doing the pledge yeah. thing and making them yeah. wear the hats and making the yeah. announcements and all that. Doing everything but making them swallow goldfish. Pretty much. At this point. Yeah. And I mean, God, having to dance with the pledge, the digit, the dates, pl- the pledge, bleh, the pledges dates, having to dance with all 30 of the brothers. Yeah. There are, first of all, there are some weird implications about that that I'm yeah. not okay with. Yeah, if you think too hard about it, you will think about what they're kind of doing. What this would be if this is in the Playboy Network, I'll put it that way. It's more also the biker movie concept. Mm, yeah, 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 kind of. Kind of the initiation by, by uh, um, other people's areas. Let's leave it that be tasteful. Yeah, um, but. Uh... I also think the catch is, is that, you know, Goodrich as a character is trying to be the kind of, and it, I love that the actor's name is Joshua Cadman. Cadman. Nice. That's, Cad. that is fitting for him to, but yeah, he's a interesting, you know, at the, at the very least, it, you know, he gives us a clear antagonist to this episode, which was nice. So aside from fat shaming, it's this fucking guy. Yeah. Yeah. At least he gets shown up. He gets shown up in the end. He's proven wrong. Yep. Uh, by the way, that is the actor who I said was a regular for the two seasons of Duet. Uh, he played oh. uh, Steve Maloney. He was Steve Maloney. He's the buddy at the bar. Oh, no way. I did not recognize him. I used to watch that show when I was tiny, as I've said before on this podcast. But I don't, didn't recognize him at all. That's interesting. That's mm-hmm. interesting I mean, it's just, it, it took me a bit to track it down. But yeah, that's that's the same guy. Huh. I did want to point out, though, he also uh, was also in all eight uh, episodes of the one season or Night Watch, another comp show from the late 80s. Um, but he was in a movie. And Lisa, I want you to guess what the movie is. And here's here's your clue. Steve Martin and Christopher Walken. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Oh, dude. I'm trying to remember what two of them. Oh, thanks to heaven. There you go. There you go. It clicked. Oh, that's cool. What is he? Who is it actually in that? In, in uh, he plays a character named Jumbo, so I don't know oh. to what extent that that is. I think that's somebody in Walken's club, though, isn't it? He's one of the gangsters, yeah. I think. I think that he might be one of the people in that dance number where um, the, the, the him and Steve Martin and somebody else in the do just before after he's seduced Eileen and he's um, talking about getting El Casho. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to watch. I have to watch that film again. It's really good. I mean, good. I want to watch it again anyway because I yeah. love that movie. Yeah. Incredibly divisive film. Good lord. Um, but I, anyway, I don't believe people hate it that much. It's really good. It's not as good as the, the miniseries is really good. You also should watch miniseries at some point. It's really good. Bob Hoskins. Yeah. God, just Bob Hoskins as that character. Good yeah. lord. Wow. That's oh just, yeah, he's really, Wow. I need. I need to see that. He's um, amazing. So as we go through the rest of the episode, though, we have these little vignettes. We have the flower girls who are, as you said, the flower children, which are, uh, I believe that's Wendy and Julie, uh, Wendy and Judy Hallen, uh, Hallen, I believe. Yes. And uh, one of them, Wendy, was a uh, former Angora Deb in season yes. five's Bad Girls. She once again popped up here thanks to her mom, Ronnie, being on the show. Yep. Now, she would actually stay in the business as an assistant to producers, production staff, and PA gigs, which is really oh. cool, including on Beaches and Pretty Woman. And she even moved into, like, transportation captain on, like, John Carpenter's Vampires, The Parent Chap, oh. Runaway Bride, and What Women Want. So, go figure. Wow. 
now here's the interesting one. So Judy Helen, I'm like I said, I'm hoping I'm correct in this. I'm pretty sure Judy Helen is one of these two flower girls, and the chances are pretty good. Now, most of the Helen and Marshalls that appear in the sequence, they don't really go outside the family business into the business of Hollywood at, at large. Yeah. Now, Judy, on the other hand, ended up learning the to be an assistant to the producer. Oh. mostly on these types of shows, but it inevitably kept her busy through the 80s and 90s. Uh, so obviously this is for stuff that other Marshall shows like Journey Loves Chachi, Happy Days, yeah. Valerie, but then like Nothing in Common, uh, mm. Shout, wow. uh, the uh, Coppola's Dracula, uncredited wow. as an uh, assistant to one of the producers, multiple 90s, 90s and aughts TV shows, then as a production coordinator and second unit coordinator, because it looks like she was working primarily at this time in Australia. So this is for like things like Tales of the South Seas, the Flipper TV series, um, mid-aughts horror flicks like House of Wax, Darkness Falls, The Ruins. And what's cool is Judy Hallen in this position as like a second unit coordinator, production coordinator, transportation, you know, not transportation, sorry, but like sort of like a production office coordinator, still active to this day. Wow. And especially for like second unit when things are shot in Australia, including Life of Pi, The Shallows, Pacific Rim 2, Bleeding Steel, Mortal Kombat 2021, and most recently, before they moved production elsewhere and pissed off everybody, pissed off everybody, Lord of the Rings: Rings of Power for two episodes. Wow. Okay, that's amazing. That's really cool. That's super cool. That's super cool. Shows you that the um, the martial genes go on in the entertainment industry. They continue onward. Yep. That is and if anybody awesome. is thinking, wow, gosh, you've talked a bunch about the people involved in this episode. Guess what? We have three more we still haven't talked about yet. Or sorry. Uh, yeah, three more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey. All right. Any other stuff that you want to bring up about the episode, though, now that I've gabbed? Yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to mention that the, com the syndication commercial for this episode mentions that this is a fraternity house flash dance, which... A is not an accurate description, and B makes it obvious that these episodes were airing in syndication in 1984, 1985, Flashdance was a big deal. So, Yep. Mm -hmm. Hilarious. That, that is amazing. Now, Flashdance was the Berkheimer produced one, right? Yeah, the one with the Jennifer Beals. That's it, yeah, yeah. The stripping and the welding. The welding and the stripping and the song the that was covered amazingly by Carpenter Brut, yes. And Maniac and all that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's cool to see at least that they did like a uh, like a full like it's just the one room, but they really flesh it out. There's a lot of cool details about the space. I, th yeah. I thought it was it was well done. It's one of the few times that like I kind of got taken aback. Like, oh yeah, wow, they actually like made a full set for this. You know that yeah, you can see did. into the rooms in the background, yeah. and you know there's there's a window with some trees behind it, and yeah, definitely yeah. It's really good. I wanted to mention, I wanted to backtrack and mention Frank's 20-year-old catch-up. Yes, thank you. Uh, that is in my notes. Holy yeah. cow. I yeah. don't want to hear about that either, but yet I'm terribly curious. Like, I'm imagining that's going to turn into uh, the secret ingredient in some new Umbrella Corporation virus. That means he literally took the ketchup from Milwaukee with him to California. <laughs> mm -hmm. What were they putting, on ke putting ketchup on in the pizza bowl? Well, they probably had like, well, it might have been his uh, first corn dogs when he went true, to the ball game. True, true, true. Possible, 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 possible. I love that Frank's like, Frank's like, find a man to Shirley. Like, <laughs> Stop wasting oh my time God. With these boys. Oh my God. And Laverne plays her guitar for the first time this season after playing a lot in season six. And we're going to see it more later on in the season. She's kind of getting better at it. As if you didn't notice. Yeah, that's yeah. background Edna has been teaching her well off camera. Yes, yes. Ghost Edna has been doing a great job. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> I love uh, the way Shirley's using uh, 60 slang here. Groovy. Me. You got it, man. <laughs> yeah. Keen. They're in college, Rhonda. And then Rhonda's saying, who, what, who wants uh, beef, uh, that old beef when you got fresh veal on the hook? Like, I that whole exchange with Rhonda is amazing. Yeah. yeah oh, I exactly. get it. These are your D A T E S S. Uh, very college Rhonda, but they can S P E L L. And oh, then Mike yeah. responds, "Well, not really. We're still freshmen." Oh, bless. That whole thing is great. Cause that's some good. That is some solid dialogue. Mm -hmm. some... Gotta give, gotta give, them gotta give a hat to the dad. I told you, Rhonda would grow on you. The time. Yeah. Told you, I win. I win. Ha ha ha. Anyway. I love that this sign thing, that he's kind of good-natured about being stallion because he eats like a horse. 
Yeah, I, I mean that line yeah. still makes me sick, yeah. and I just my yeah, my note is that dot is. dot dot fuck. That's yeah, my note. Something's bad. Something is bad. The kind of unnecessary sick easy. It's the easy joke. The easy joke is that it's bad. Um, yeah. Am I thinking that the girls are the mothers? Yes. Uh, that, by the way, is uh, Kathleen Marshall as Kathy yes. with the braces. Yes. Uh, that is Gary and Barbara's daughter. Yes. Uh, she would mostly be a stage actor, so she's yes. really putting the chops to work here. Uh, she went. She uh, mostly did stage after graduating from Northwestern University. Mostly appeared in her family's movies, so of course, like Flamingo Kid, Dear God, Young Doctors in Love, League of Their Own. She even appeared in a few Marshall adjacent films like Ed TV from Ron Howard. So I, I just want to mention this, by the way. Cause, okay, so she's she's blonde. She's wearing this nice, you know, sort of pastel color top. So she looks. Like Reese Witherspoon to me in this in this scene. I guess I'm, I don't know maybe because of the, the college. I was thinking I was thinking like Cruel Intentions. A little, kind of, yeah. Kind of, kind of like her in Pleasantville to a degree. Yeah. Okay. I can I can get, I can see that. Okay. But Kathleen Marshall though, this actor was yes. also surprisingly the ER doctor in the hospital sequence in the 1996 film Freeway. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't know. Which uh, for those for those at home, that is. Probably the most wild mid '90s post Tarantino grimy sort of surreal horror indie flick version of Little Red Riding Hood you ever did see. That's amazing. That is amazing. You see that? Uh, but yeah, that I yet. do love the touch that she has braces though. That was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it makes the girls feel even older than they did before. Yes. Yes. Oh, you must be. He must be Michael's mother. I've heard so much about you. God. Oh, oh it's like, oh, you caddy college. Oh, you kids, you freaking kid. Oh, you oh, freaking baby. kids. I'm just waiting for Shirley to call the cop and say, hey, we got another Kent State on our hands. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm up. sorry. Uh, well, that's not too far out of pocket. We do have a Kent State joke coming up later in the season. What? Oh, that's right. Yeah. You told, you did tell me about yeah. this. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I still believe they got away with. Oh, oh. God. It's like that. That um, uh, a joke that they made up Birmingham, like Jesus. Anyway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's less funny as time goes on. Um, she's into leather. She made my sandals. Uh. <laughs> on top oh of yes, me. the flower girl's talking about Mother Nature. <laughs> oh, you mean Harriet's mom? <laughs> she isn't into flowers anymore. Yeah, that that is adorable. Uh... I love that bit. A lot of the little vignettes in this whole sequence are like some of my favorite parts of the episode, to be honest. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cute little character moments. Uh, where it's kind of just very loose and very non-formalized. Uh, this kind of walking, wandering around this party and meeting all the different characters. That's a lot of fun. Exactly. I, it, it's almost kind of sad, to be honest, that uh, when... Um, Around this time in the in the script, Lyle has to then start announcing all the people that are coming in as part of his uh, pledge yep. thing. And uh, the one he announces is, what is it, like a Ken Robertson and his lovely date, Penny Lee. And yeah. Penny Lee, that's Penny Lee Hallen. That's another yeah. of the, the Marshall Hallen clan. Yeah. So here's the cool thing about her. And I wish that she had been involved and like be able to chat with everybody because... She never really worked on this show other than this appearance, but she ends up becoming like an apprentice editor and assistant editor on over a dozen films through the 1990s, including A League of Their Own, Slums of Beverly Hills, The Last Samurai, Drop Dead Gorgeous, and High Fidelity. Wow. And she also worked as a dialogue coach on Overboard and an assistant sound editor on Young Guns. Yes, that is another connection to this wow. season. Uh, Turner and Hooch, Talk Radio and Clean and Sober, as well as sound editor. So... Like, cause that's, you know, it's a cute little moment. It's a good little walk on, but it's just, it's one of those like, ah, like I wish we could have gotten just like a little more with those types of characters. And it could be the Robertson and Penny Lee thing was going to lead on into yeah. something and they just cut it out yeah. for time. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 I was watching wondering why, why and if that was going to go anywhere. It did not. So like that is new, entirely new info. That's entirely new info. Me. I was really pleased. Really I'm just going to say for anyone keeping track at home, we have one name left. I swear yes. to God, one name left. Uh, <laughs> the mom in Penny absolutely leaps out when she's with Tracy at the very which end. The, which is the last yeah. one. The last yeah. one. Go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead and take the, take yeah. that one on. Yeah. When she, when she takes a cup from her, just the, the mom that just leaps like that. That's adorable. And that I love that she, and she gives it that sniff. Yeah. Yeah. There are times... Laverne's mom aspect comes out. I loved it in last season with the other woman, with her yeah. and uh, and and uh, the the kid. I can't remember the yeah, character's name. Keith it was Coogan. Keith. <laughs> yeah, Keith Coogan. Yeah, they were great together. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Bit. Sadly, this is Tracy's last appearance on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sad, a sad time to watch. I'm just gonna be there. In real life, she went off to college, 
and uh, ended up becoming an a, an actress again and other things. And, yeah, mostly like little yeah. parts in family family members' movies. So like Raising yeah. Helen, Beaches, Valentine's Day, When Harry Met Sally, yeah. etc. Yeah. League yeah. of Their Own, though, she gets some dialogue, yeah. I believe, in that. Yes, yeah, she, she has a pretty decent part in the movie. The, 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 yes. Um, she also, as I mentioned before, I think on her first appearance, uh, she was uh, Thornburg's assistant in Die Hard, yeah. which I'm glad to see then that she was able to get away from that scumbag from for Die Hard yeah, too. That's cool. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's cool. But yeah, but no, yeah, Tracy's cool. Tracy's great. She's wonderful. I loved her in this little scene. I love the and I you know what I also really like. She seems like she enjoys the presence of Ly- like she really sold that. Nah, Lyle's cool. I like Lyle, and I want to be with Lyle. Yeah, he makes me yeah. all warm and fuzzy, and it's like, yeah. yes, it's yeah. love. It's, she gets goosebumps. Yes, yes, she knows what goosebumps are. She knows how they feel. She gets it. She gets it. And you can have them for anyone, including for a Lyle figure. Yes. I also was going to mention she says the animal magnetism. Yeah, yeah, animal magnetism. <laughs> uh, which makes are... me wonder. Sorry, go. Sorry. Yeah. Would yeah. she have been a good squiggy sibling or relative at some point? Honestly, yeah. We will get a squiggy sibling at some point in the season. You will see later. Not, not this season, next season. Next season, next season, next season. You will see eventually. Eventually, you will see. Mm. You will see. Um, that actually makes me wonder. The boys have not been in either of the last two episodes. They haven't been in the last two episodes. So do you think that the show like needed them to be in either one of these do you like miss them okay so here's the thing i could see about this one if they were in this one i would actually see them as trying to recruit talent and at first you think oh god yeah. they're trying to pick up the the pretty girl co-eds yeah and actually what it turns out is they're looking for the heartthrobs because they would yeah. look at mike and go it's like forget school you need to be in the pictures you don't yeah. need the brains you know the, the, do you know that guy fred astaire total moron you know that guy gene kelly buffoon uh, buffoon rooney you know you know have got this got the star power of a dana andrews you know yes. and yes Yes, I can see that 100%. Oh, my God. That would be funny. Oh, I can see the guys just hanging out at the party for free food. Oh, yeah, that too. Totally. For free food and yeah. free attention. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, yeah, exa- yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. God, and them trying to give, like, fashion tips to the college kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it looks really cool, the beanie? A Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And he just gives him the one off his back, and yeah. he's got another one underneath. Yeah. I yeah. always, I always make sure to wear a sparing for cases yeah. like this. You gotta dress in layers. That's what keeps you warm. Oh my goodness! I can 100 percent picture all of this uh. very well. But yeah, I really did. The probably the best part of the episode for me, besides the girls realizing, okay, so we're older, but we can still have fun. Uh, the best part for me is the dance contest, uh, which is just Penny and Cindy just showing off what they can do. And they can do it well. So, all the different kinds it's of dance. Again, there's. So go. Oh yeah. Go. No, 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 Go ahead. You, you're, you're, you're talking up the good. You, you yeah. get to the positive. I'll talk to the negative. You go to the positive say, first. Did you notice any of the different um, dances they're doing? They're doing a lot of different um, popular dances from the '60s. Here. I do not know any of those dances. I recognize them as. Oh, I've seen that in that in a movie. Yeah. I've seen that in a movie. I've seen yeah. that in a TV show, and that's kind of it. Yeah. Well, I saw the Hitchhiker. I noticed a couple of Madisons, a little bit of Madisoning. So there's, there's a variety of different dances in there that uh, they did a good job portraying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a good that was good work by whoever coordinated this scene. Yeah, it's very it's elaborate work. Yeah, yeah, because they had to switch between switch between a bunch of different um, styles over and over again. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, different dance partners yes. too, for that matter. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, what were we gonna say? What were we gonna say? You're going to say the negative. So, I... Turbovich's... Turbovich's physical comedy skills don't work for me. I have now come to the point I've watched enough of his physical comedy bits that, you know, the the way he directs them, the way he stages them, the way he kind of tries to keep things in a certain path on track, I just don't like it. Yeah. They're boring. They don't tell the story to me. And so I just phase out. I stopped caring and yeah. it sucks because I really enjoy this episode and I, it, you know, and I can't say that, Oh no, it's not that interesting. Of dance. No, this is interesting dancing. It's just not told in a way that's in, that interests yeah. me. It's not in a way that I give a shit about. And yeah. it's, uh, 
It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, the direction is just not working for you because direction just isn't jiving. Basically. It really is not because and yeah. so like, uh, I mean, to this extent, like, okay, so. Uh, I even mentioned this before, you know, that, you know, he's the kind of director who just kind of keeps moving. You know, he does five episodes here, two episodes there, sometimes a single episode of a show. Often those yeah. were shows that didn't do very well. So, like, for instance, the only movie this guy directed, the only, like, feature film it seems like he actually has got credit for during the 80s was, uh, one of the few anyway, is a young people's picture called Free Ride. It's a teenage teenagers versus mobsters comedy. And... When you read the premise, you can already tell this needs to be in the hands of somebody way more interesting. This this dude's style, like my my note is, it, it's like this would be a lot more fa- fun in the hands of Anna, Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett. You know, that uh, you know that sort of madcap, violent but funny sort of attitude, and uh, like even even for the time, like a Sam Raimi. You know, like it's like Sam Raimi via, via Crime Wave. For this episode and with this dance, there it doesn't have the passion you saw in um, ep- season two with uh, Excuse Me, May I Cut In, which I think, uh, I want to say that was Howard. Let me just double check. Mm. Sorry, that was John Thomas Lennox, oh. who is another uh, skilled uh, director and production manager type person. Oh, yes, because yeah. they handled uh, the absolute you know clusterfuck of how do you say are you dead in German? Ah. And assistant director and such. And so, you know, uh, somebody that at the very least could understand, I'm telling the story. It just, it's just there. The dances are impressive. The execution is impressive. But just from a stylistic st- point of view, I feel like just from the edit, the framing of the shots, whatever, I'm just staring. There is no build up. There is no ebb and flow. Why the fuck should I care? Yeah. yeah. So this one is a, this is a weak episode for me in general, but uh, there's the flatness of the way that's directed is a little annoying. There's a couple of things that I did enjoy about the way it was shot, like the close-ups of the boots and the way that he panned out to widen the um, this floor, the scene, widen the angle. I that. yeah, I had like comp- I had completely spaced. Uh, by that, that was one. There was a couple of good shots. There were a couple of good shots that. I'll I'll have to you know maybe I'll come back to it another time. I mean I'm gonna put this yeah. on while we're recording this and see if I can find the. I don't know. It just it's a thing. They move. They do their song and dance. I mean I hope to God by at least the tenth episode that this guy has found a way to impress me other than the Bardwell caper because otherwise this is going to hurt for the rest of the it's fucking po- show. It's possible he will figure uh, it out. He'll figure it out. He'll figure his way out. We'll see. We'll see. All right. We'll see. God, it's just, it's what a waste of the, I mean, this is a Dana Olson yeah. episode. This is the guy who did Child's Play. He's got yeah. three more episodes as a program consultant. And then he ends up, okay. And this is the guy who wrote Wacko for da- Great on Clark. It's a, he, this is for a guy that wrote a script to a Joe Don Baker clown <laughs> movie. Who wrote The Burbs for Joe Dante. Who did the script for Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Who's done Nickelodeon superhero shows more recently. This deserves... Better. Deserves better. Everybody anyway, deserves um, more. Everybody wants to rule the world. I'm <laughs> like Shatner. Anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we come back to the end. We come to the, the whole thing with Lyle and yeah, the burn and yeah, the kiss yeah, and all sweet. that. And Enough. That's sweet. Yeah. She she gives him the, gets him the first. I did like the tip that she gives, which you know I remember having that moment of like, oh yeah, no, don't do that. Don't leave with your belly. Leave with your leave with your no, leave with your lips. Leave with your lips. And it, the main thing is also like figuring out which direction do you turn. Yeah. You know, it's like you get you, you panic about these things when you're 17 and never kissed yeah. a girl before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor guys. But at least they get that out of the way. Uh, sorry, I'm flashing back to when I was 17 again. Oh, like, what a night <laughs> when you were younger, etc. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the, I love the scene at the end where the girls are just with their blanket, falling asleep on the couch. It's sweet. That was that uh, was adorable. That whole yeah. like they can yeah. still rock out, but they're just they're gonna feel it more yep. in the morning. Yep. Which, which yep. yeah, twenty seven's yep. a bit er, a bit young to be experiencing that. But I will say, I you know like I just turned thirty six a week ago. Yeah, when you hit thirty two yeah. and over, that's when yeah. it starts to be like I think I'm ready to lie down. Yeah. I'm made of dust, dust Methuselah, dust, 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 I'm made of dust, like, <laughs> how that goes. 
Okay. I say as my knee makes a crack. Anyway, but on... Um, okay. Like, the button at the end where Shirley says, we have, we have grown women, we have put aside childish things. And then the other girl points out, well, yeah, you're putting aside my childish things. And then she says, why don't you throw a boo-boo kitty? And then, oh, well, that changes her tune. That's um, right. Uh, yeah, that whole yeah. thing. You're not a piece of trash, are you, boo-boo kitty? No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> That's very cute. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. And I want to note the fact that the helmet that Laverne puts on her head, or fails to put on her head, eventually surfaces later on Lenny's bunk in the boys' apartment, I think, in uh, at the awards. So, props shuffle that around, unless you want to decide something else is going on. Yeah, well, I, I, I just DM'd you a message that you'll get a giggle out of. Oh, my God. Oh! Yeah. Well, it's, just, it's just, you know, she she a favor for a favor. Anyway, but yeah. Um, and also, now, mind you, much more in character in canon, likely, is the likelihood is that uh, he just swiped it when he was in yeah. their apartment one day. It was like, oh, it's a yeah. helmet. That's what I thought. What, that's why I thought I put my helmet there. <laughs> and it's like, Lenny, you never wear a helmet. Oh, that's right. I know I forgot something because I got hit in the head once. Because uh, then how many trucks and vehicles have run him over and he survived? And how many buildings he's fallen off of? Uh, is, he, is, he, is he secretly a superhero is the question. So it's posing a point. You mean uh, some sort of man that can withstand the power and strikes fear into the night like a bolt lightning of man. lightning? Lightning man! The power to wear no shirt! <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, gracious. Oh, gosh. What, what do we rank in this one? Yeah. For me, this is a weak, well, weaker one. This is a weaker one. This uh, for the dancing scene to the cute stuff with the kids, uh, for some of the charming dialogue and being. This is a uh, low six, about five point nine for me. It is cute. It's not essential. Uh, watch the dance scene if you want to, or if you can. The last scene at the end is very cute, um, and the party scene is cute. But everything else surrounding this. Uh, Take it or leave it. Yeah, I, yeah, six, just flat yeah. six. Maybe a little less on a bad day, but you know, it's. Ah, God, I'm waiting for a good exceptional episode to really strike a chord with me again. Coming. We got we got some good ones in, in the canon, so to speak. I wanted to mention before we before we close this one out that the line "Start the music, no neck" is great. And that's the old Spunky Shirley. I really did enjoy that line. That's one of my favorite Shirley lines. Oh, God, I miss yeah. Spunky Shirley. Yeah. You forget how much, how long it's been since we've had Spunky Shirley basically telling this. Because I like that this is not snobs versus slobs. Yeah. This is a old versus. Yeah, yeah it's the it's it's a, it's a it's the culture clash. Yeah. It's, it's a clash between these young hippies who are um, high off their high off of their tits, basically, and the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, right. half the tits. Oh, gracious. Yeah. You know, and that's the amazing thing. You know, that's in the 60s, they used to snort yeah. tits. It's amazing. You just snort things off of tits. That just, helps. Just... <laughs> mm. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> but cool. Um, I don't think I have any other last remarks. I got through everything. Um, I'm yeah, very like tired. <laughs> Cool. Uh, we'll have a quick word from our sponsor, and uh, we will we'll hopefully have all y'all to uh, come back for our uh, post amble and talk about what's uh, coming up next week. And hopefully, we haven't scared any of you off with how aggressive I've been. <laughs> Everybody's still here. They know they they've lived through a racer head. They know how you feel. We know how you feel. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, so much for joining us for Night After Night. And if you would like to know more, you can find us on Twitter at Night After Night PC or Night After Night Pod on Facebook, Tumblr, WordPress, and Patreon, and wherever good podcasts may be listened to. And if you would like for us to uh, get some more stuff into your ears or before your screens, you can uh, throw us a buck or two at the Patreon. Get some of those goals up there. Do some bonus content, episodes, things like that. And, uh, 
anyway, though, with that all said and done, we're trying to stay young at heart with our teenage-style lust. But uh, that being said, uh, hey, Lisa, my honey, my love, uh, lovely love, uh, what are we doing next? Shirley accidentally handcuffs herself to a young, bearded, and hair-sporting Richard Maul, who finds herself an accessory to a crime he's recently committed. Do they both hide from the law long enough to get their hands free? This is the defiant one. Hmm. Well, I defy you not to listen to it. Oh, yeah. Remember, guys? Remember, y'all? Remember every single one of you? If someone half your age asks you to dance, make sure you are not wearing pigtails and go-go boots. Because then you can stomp on them and kill them. Hmm. <laughs> and also remember that uh, on slick wooden floors, go-go boots do make you go-go. Mahi go-go. Looking up for you, go-go.